All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start. Uh, my name is Lilia Picanzo, and I am the Product Marketing Specialist here at Vicon. Um, just a little note before we begin the presentation, um, I wanted to acknowledge the continual difficult situation that is COVID-19. Uh, many difficult families throughout the world are being affected, and I've mentioned this before in the other webinars we've done, but I cannot stress it enough. Um, the Vicon team really hopes that you and your loved ones are staying safe. We continue to work hard at Vicon and our support, our sales, and our warehouse teams are all working hard around the clock to provide you with any assistance that you may need. Um, today, we are presenting Vicon's deeper dive into VAX access control, and that will be presented by Hui Lai, the Applications Engineer at Vicon. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, don't hesitate to type them into the question box in your uh, GoToWebinar towards the bottom right of your control panel. And um, we will cover as many questions as we can when we're done with the presentation. So I will now pass this off to Hui. Thank you, Alia. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to first thank you for taking the time from your busy schedule to attend our webinar. Uh, what I'd like to cover today is to present an overview of our VAX access control system, including all the various hardware and software components that we offer. Uh, I'll also give him some information about our integration with various third-party systems. Uh, after that, we'll uh, do a short demonstration of our VAX software. And then finally, we'll talk about some new developments that's coming. Um, again, um, as Ilya mentioned, we all also have some time at the end uh, for some questions and answers. So if you have any questions, please feel free to submit your questions in the question area. So what is VAX? Uh, VAX is a cutting edge uh, IP access control system uh, that is powerful in its offerings and yet simple to navigate and use. Uh, first and foremost, it is thin browser based software, uh, which allows you to access the VAX server through uh, common browsers. Uh, there's no software that you have to install on your client. Uh, you just simply open the browser and navigate uh, to the server. Um, and you can do this on uh, any computing device, including computers, uh, tablets, smartphones, uh, again, all without having to install uh, client software. And this saves you time and reduces maintenance costs. We also offer an array of controllers, readers, and cards for a completely scalable enterprise solution. There's also a full video integration uh, with not only are Valeris and Biconet to VAX, but we also integrate with other VMS platforms uh, like Milestone, Exact Vision, and Digital Watchdog. So Vicom provides a full solution end-to-end, -end, um, starting with uh, a Vicon certified Windows 10 server. Now this is the server that hosts the VAX software. And we sell the server um, and all the software and configuration is pre-programmed on the server. Uh, of course, you have the option to uh, just purchase the software and install it on your own standalone, standalone computer. There's different options for controllers and readers, which we'll cover later here. Um, and the fact that you know, VAX software, again, is HTML5 base. So again, this is a browser-based solution. And what HTML5 uh, allows you to do is view the, uh, the VAX menu um, and have that menu size accordingly to what device you're using. So if it's a computer, you'll have a full large screen. If it's a tablet or a smartphone, then the menu will be sized accordingly to your device. So at the heart of VAX hardware is the controller panel. And in this case, this is the one or two door controller. Now the controller is where you connect your readers and your door strikes, uh, basically all your access control elements. Um, this controller itself uh, is a solid state construction with digital relays and has overcurrent and surge protection uh, to prevent from damages from let's say, uh, a short circuit or uh, over-search uh, current. Um, 
the unique thing about the controller is that it's also PoE powered. So when you connect this controller to a PoE network drop, it'll provide up to 12 volts and 500 milliamps of power or 24 volts and 250 milliamps of power. This is enough to power up two readers and door strikes, uh, basically all the components that are essential for your access control needs. The layout of the controller is very easy for you to connect um, all your different elements, again, your door strikes, your door contacts, and auxiliary inputs, and you can see all the different inputs and outputs here on the layout, on the panel. Very easy uh, to understand layout. Another unique design is the panel includes an LCD display with keyboard control buttons, and this allows you to easily program the IP address of this controller and the IP address of the VAX server that it's communicating to. You can also run diagnostic tests on your input and output relays on this uh, display. Keep in mind, this is an intelligent device. The controller communicates to the server to get all the uh, information, including door schedules and card user information, and it loads it onto the controller itself. So once it's on the controller, this is acting independently of the server. So even if your server connection is down, the control panel continues to work properly to allow access to doors. Finally, the unique, uh, another unique feature of the control panel is a built-in uh, motion sensor here for request to exit. So oftentimes in access control, uh, you have to wire a separate request to exit button um, in order for you to do a request to exit, to exit out of the door from your secure side. Uh, with the controller panel here, we actually have the built-in motion sensor, and this is an optional um, component. So the design of this panel is meant uh, uniquely for close proximity to the door, so you can wire locally all your hardware like readers, door contacts, handicap buttons. So as you can see here in this picture, this panel is actually above the door, uh, of course on the secure side, so it's not exposed to the public, but it's on the secure side of the door. Um, and all your wiring to your various door components is local. So the advantage of this is it cuts down on uh, all your wiring. So you don't have to wire, uh, home run your wire back to an IT closet somewhere. This is an example of a one door controller. Here you see a two door controller, and again, it's a single IP network controller, but instead of one door, you have now two readers, and each reader is connected to a separate door. Now, even though physically you only see one controller here, because it is configured for two doors, each door can have a different time schedule. So each door is programmed and acts independently. So as we mentioned with the built-in request to exit, the advantage of having that is you can have the motion sensor on the control panel itself, detect the person come into range and automatically issue a request to exit for you to open the door and not activate a uh, door, uh, door forced open uh, condition. The request to exit motion uh, range you can see here is the typical, you know, about three, feet, three meters deep and six meters wide. And this is a range that is uh, configurable and can be fine-tuned within the software itself. So besides our PoE one or two-door controller, uh, we also have the multi-door controller. And this is externally powered by a 12-volt, 5-amp power supply. So unlike the one or two doors, uh, this door controller supports up to eight doors 
uh, through these two door expansion boards. In this picture here, you see four of these two door expansion boards. So this controller can control up to eight doors. Again, this is not PoE powered. This is external power supply. Um, and the idea for this is with this type of configuration in the enclosure, this is meant for your more typical traditional uh, centralized access control design, in which case this is located in an IT closet somewhere. The controller here also features on each of these door boards uh, three dry contact inputs for each door. Now on the each door board itself, you have actually up to six dry contacts. And with four of these boards, uh, that'll give you 24 dry contacts altogether. Now these dry contact inputs can be associated logically between doors. So you can actually have one door board that has two doors and dry contacts, uh, but the door on one board can be associated to an input an, or an output on another door board. So this system uh, maintains a logical configuration of multiple inputs and outputs that allows you again to associate physically different input outputs on different boards, um, to different doors on different boards. You can see here a picture of a battery, and this is an optional backup battery, um, and this is used for uh, like a UPS in case your uh, power goes down. So when this battery is connected, uh, it's actually charged up, and in case of power failure, then the power cuts over to the backup battery here. Now this backup battery is an optional component that you would uh, you would purchase from a third-party vendor. The next thing here is our I.O. controller. So similar to uh, our other you know, master door controller, um, you have a control panel, it's the master control panel, and again, you have the same type of LCD screen and keypad buttons to program the controller. The difference is this controller is not for a door, but it's meant to connect to IO's inputs and outputs. So you see here these square boards here, these are the inputs and output boards. On each of these boards, there's eight inputs and eight outputs. This one control panel can connect up to eight of these boards, and that will provide you up to 64 inputs and outputs. Now, these inputs can be used for tying in to another system. For example, you can have an alarm system that you can receive input into the system and the trigger of an alarm system can activate certain conditions, certain things on the access control. You can also use the inputs here to monitor what we call unmanaged doors. So let's say if you have doors with door contacts, but you don't have a reader there, but still you want to know when that door is open. Then if you have a door contact at the door, you can tie the door contact into one of these inputs and it'll be treated as like a unmanaged door. So you can see again, events that happen at the door, you know, the door closing in and out. You can also put door strikes at these doors um, and be able to use the outputs from this board to fire off and activate a door. So for example, again, a door that you have a door strike uh, but you don't have a reader. You just want to be able to open that door automatically. Let's say you have a receptionist who wants to buzz somebody in. Then they can actually activate an input on this, which will trigger that output to open the door. We also have elevator controllers. And elevator controllers is... Uh, a way for you to allow access to elevators to certain floors. 
So you can see here on the elevator controller here, there's reader ports. There's two reader ports, similar to a two-door reader. The reader ports here are meant for readers that are placed inside an elevator cab. When you swipe your credential through the reader, uh, then this elevator control panel will give you access to the floors that you have access to. So you can program which floors a certain card credential is given access to. Each of these, again, expansion boards, similar to the I.O. boards, um, is configured to give one reader access to eight different floors. So each of these uh, floor boards will have a reader that's programmed to give you different access levels to up to eight floors. And this one single controller can tie, can connect up to eight of these I.O. boards or floor boards, and that'll allow you to have two elevator cabs with reader access to 32 floors for each elevator. Next here, we're gonna talk about our Aperio controller. So these days we're seeing more and more customers requiring the use of wireless door lock sets. Um, so let me talk about wireless door lock sets. So in your traditional door, as you saw a couple slides ago, at the door, you basically have your reader, your door strikes, um, and all is wired tied to the controller itself. With a wireless door lock set, uh, all those components are built in to these uh, self-contained battery-powered doors. These are wireless doors. So all the reader functions, the door strikes, the locks, everything is in here. You can see a picture of these different wireless door sets. So that way you don't have to, again, run wire from these locks to the controller panel itself. The Aperio controller allows VAX to uh, tie into a uh, Asa Abloy Aperio uh, wireless hub. So we integrate specifically with Asa Abloy's uh, brand of wireless doors. And this controller can then be used to control uh, wirelessly up to eight doors. So it's like you have eight doors physically tied to this controller, only you know, you're not having individual readers and wires um, connected to the controller, but everything is through this wireless interface. Again, uh, just to emphasize that our integration is currently with the Asa Abloy Aperio wireless door sets. Uh, later on, we'll talk about uh, other integrations. So here we're showing the overall topology of the VAX access control. As you can see, you know, I've shown the different types of controllers that we have. You know, we can have the one door, the two doors, the multi-door controllers, we can have IO controllers. So you can have mix and match of all different types of controllers on your network and everything will be communicating uh, through a LAN or WAN to a VAX server. Again, you can also tie in VAX to a VMS system that's also on the same network. And again, all this is communicating through the LAN or WAN network. It could be on just one site, or if you have multiple buildings, you can have door panels on multiple locations, all tying into one single server. So you can see that this can encompass uh, multiple sites as well as just a single site, all with the use of one single controller or one single server. So we also have a range of card readers, um, starting with, you know, the more common prox readers, proximity readers. So, you know, in the marketplace, this is the most Type, a common type of readers um, where it reads your cards. Um, we have a, a variety of form factors and the range for the card read is from five to eight inches. So you can be you know, five to eight inches away from the reader itself. 
Uh, we also have a dual authentication keypad reader uh, for the Prox reader, and that allows you to basically um, swipe a card and also enter a code. So for more secure places where you require not only a card swipe, but also a keypad, pin pad um, code, then you can use that with this reader. The readers, our readers, um, accept all standard prox card format ranging from 26 uh, to 75 bits. Uh, and we support over um, 20 different card formats. The next class of readers is called our smart card readers. So this smart card reader um, communicates through uh, standard 13.56 megahertz frequency. The unique thing about this type of reader, it's a, it's a secure encrypted transmission, which means that when you swipe your card at the reader, that reader information that gets transmitted to the reader is secure. Nobody can hack into that communication. Today, with the standard prox readers, um, again, prox readers is very common, and for most people, you know, it's secure enough. But the fact is, um, people are able to uh, hack into that signal. So there are devices on the market that you can readily purchase that you can basically sniff a signal from a card read to a reader. And in fact, you can even clone a card, so you can duplicate a credential. Um, and you know, be able to enter somebody's premise using a, a falsified credential. Uh, with a smart card reader, that makes it virtually impossible because of the unique secure transmission between the card and the reader. And first of all, you can't um, uh, duplicate the card itself, and there's not uh, a readily, readily easily, easily way for you to sniff that signal between the card and the reader. Um, the protocol that we support for the smart card is the MyFair Deskfire EV1 and EV2. So as long as you have this style of cards, um, you know you can purchase the cards from us, or you can purchase the cards from other vendors. Uh, we can read that. So the next class of readers is the Bluetooth readers. So the Bluetooth is a more recent way of uh, communicating where you don't physically have a card but your card credential is actually embedded on a application on an app on your smartphone so with a smartphone you have this virtual credential and through the Bluetooth you're able to transmit that credential up to 15 feet to one of these Bluetooth readers I'll go more in detail in the next slide um, but this reader itself, you know, you're able to do not only the Bluetooth um, card credential from the phone, but you can also read, uh, again, the smart cards, you're reading the MyFair cards. So it acts as both a Bluetooth and a smart card reader all in one. Finally, we have the long range readers and transmitter. This is more meant for your uh, parking gate or parking lot application where let's say you have a transmitter button inside your car similar to like a door garage opener uh, the difference is the transmitter which is a little button when you press that button it's actually sending a secure signal with your card credential to that reader and that reader uh, is tied into the access control system so this combination of reader and transmitter uh, allows you to have a range of up to 800 feet from the transmitter to the reader itself. So a little bit more about the Bluetooth credential. So as I mentioned, with Bluetooth, you have a virtual credential that's on your smartphone. And our platform supports both iPhones and Android OS. Um, there's an app, a free app that you install on your phone called the Connect Software or Connect App. And once you've installed the Connect App, you just have to do a one-time registration and you're not disclosing any private information. You're just entering your, um, your phone number to register that um, app. 
And what you would do is you would purchase a virtual card from us and you would enter that information to the app and that will essentially give you that card credential uh, on the app itself. So once you have that, then you can take your phone and come up to a Bluetooth reader and present that credential virtually. And again, the credential uh, supports um, you know, the 26-bit Wigan common format. Um, the Bluetooth range is up to 15 feet. So we have a couple of models. We have a short range reader, and then we have a long range reader uh, that you can have up to 15 feet uh, presentation from your phone to the reader. Uh, again, this reader also acts as a dual uh, card reader, so you can have a smart card, so you can present a smart card that's communicating through the secure MyFair Deskfire EV1 or EV2 protocol. All right, so the next thing I'd like to go into is our VAC software solution. So VAX is an easy to use and robust software that's very intuitive. Um, first of all, there's only one software that's installed on a Windows OS computer. And included in the installation is SQL Express 2012, which is the database engine for VAX. Besides that, there are no other software to install. On your client computer or, or any computing device, um, you don't need to install software. All you need to do is open a browser and you can type in the IP address uh, or the address of the VAC server and through a HTTPS or SSL link, uh, you can have a secure login to your VAC server. You can use any browsers like your typical uh, IE, Internet Explorer, Chrome or Firefox. Uh, Safari, so any of these browsers can be used to access VAX. So VAX is a highly scalable enterprise platform when you can have uh, from just a few doors to as many doors and control panels and IOs as you like. Um, there's no restriction, there's no limit to the number of doors. Uh, the only restriction you have is based on the type of license you buy. So we start with a license ranging from a small system, 40 doors, um, all the way up to you know, unlimited enterprise license, which gives you unlimited doors, uh, unlimited users, um, and unlimited uh, access groups, which is access to different doors. We'll go through this a little bit more when I get into the demo, uh, but this is an image here of the VAC software. So again, you know, with the browser base, you can see the layout of the menu here. Uh, everything is very um, easy to understand. You have your different sections, day-to-day, uh, -day reporting and scheduling, and you have all your notifications. Every time any, a door event occurs, you see your notifications appear here on the right. Um, again, with the video integration, we're able to tie in a camera to a door and we pre present that video based on a specific condition at the door, such as a valid card read or an invalid card read. And we can do both live and playback of the video. We also have what's called a monitoring menu. And a monitoring menu is a simple to see view menu um, where you only get information about the card credentials that's presented at the door. So rather than seeing the full VAX menu, uh, this is a good menu for an operator who's monitoring the system to see who's going through the door, what doors are going through, and are they given access or denied access. And you can customize this menu to see you know, different um, size of the card credentials itself. And we'll go through more of this when we get into the software. We also have a maps function and you can import uh, map images into VAX 
and the maps could be in the form of uh, you know your typical picture files, your PNG, your TIFF, your JPEG images. And typically what you would be importing is a layout of your facility. And with the import, then you can uh, place access control icons on that map, such as doors, your cameras, your inputs, anything that you want to be able to monitor or to activate. Finally, one of the most unique features of the software is called an action engine. So an action engine is a high performance engine that allows you to run simultaneously multiple actions at the same time. What I mean by actions is things like, for example, if you want to override and lock down certain doors. So let's say you have uh, 20 or 30 doors in your system and you want to at the same time uh, lock down certain doors or change the door schedule of other doors, uh, send an email notification, uh, pop up a camera. So you can run different actions um, and you can tie in all this into different action programs. The program itself could be activated with a button on the software or more useful, and this is the way most of our customers use this, is to trigger the action by um, doing a certain physical thing, for example, like pushing a panic button or swiping a card uh, three times at a door reader, what we call a triple swipe, and that's a unique feature that I'll demonstrate here in our software. Some of the real life examples of where this action control engine is useful. Um, for example, we have a case uh, with a customer where they have a warehouse and they wanted to be able to turn on the lighting controls in the warehouse when a certain person uh, swipes a card on the reader. So the way the action works is when they swipe the card on the reader, um, then the software knows that the person has entered into a certain area and through the action plan can uh, be set to turn on the lights in that area. Once a person reads badges out of that area and goes into another area, then the action plan uh, knows, again, the person is removed from that location, uh, has gone to another location, and the program uh, then is able to um, shut down or turn off the lighting control in that section. Uh, we've also had customers use this for lockdown. So uh, they can swipe their card three times at a reader or specific readers or all the readers and invoke lockdown um, of all their doors or whichever specific doors they want at their facility. And this is something typically you would do in case of an emergency situation, such as a, a shooting or other emergencies. Uh, we've also had customers set uh, what's called a video notification. So upon, again, a certain alarm event, uh, we can pop up a camera that's associated to a door that where the emergency is occurring, and then we can send an email alert. So these are, you know, typical examples of how our customers are using the action control engine. The other thing now we're offering, and this is new, um, is the Vax mobile app. So we have an app on uh, iOS, and, and the Android is actually going to be uh, available soon. It's not immediately available yet, but within a couple of weeks. The app, what it allows you to do is, um, it allows you to, first of all, um, choose multiple sites. So you can program on the app itself to access different Vax sites. And you can choose the site that you want, and you can, um, view things like the door controls, the inputs, and you can override doors. So let's say if you want to um, you know, lock down certain doors or um, um, unlock certain doors, you can do that through the app. You can also view door notifications. So let's say if you want to see what events occurred at the door, uh, again, you can use the app and choose the door notifications to review a history of all the events that occurred at the door. 
And finally, the most powerful, I think, uh, feature that you have on this app is the capability of running the action plans. Remember, we just went over how we can use an action plan to invoke a system-wide action, such as you know, lockdown or email or pop-up cameras. So once you've programmed the action in the software, now it's on this app and it's uh, available with just the push of one button to invoke the action. Next thing I'd like to talk about here is our integration. So VAX integrates with a couple of third-party systems. I had already mentioned about the Apparel wireless door sets, uh, but we also have a integration to uh, badging software. So a lot of our customers you know, use badges and they want to be able to print uh, their badges and have you know, laminated with a photo of the, the employee on the badge. Um, so we integrate with a specific software called a Card Presso. This is a very common um, badging, uh, printing, and management software that allows you to print and assign credentials to cards. Um, so VAX has an integration to that software. And what, what VAX does is it'll um, be able to export all the card us user information from VAX uh, to that Cardpresso software database. Um, and again, specifically, this is for the Cardpresso software. Um, and again, we've seen this uh, widely used in the marketplace to print badge uh, photos on uh, card access cards. Another integration that we have is to a visitor management system called Easy Lobby. So Easy Lobby is a software uh, system that's very common in uh, many um, commercial systems, commercial buildings where you go into, let's say, the lobby and you as a visitor need to have a visitor badge to enter the premise. So your typical visitor badge is just a simple, you know, let's say a sticker that you uh, you put on your shirt just to indicate that you're a visitor. But sometimes um, certain locations need uh, to issue a badge that actually grants you access to doors. So these are real card access cards uh, that you can swipe at a door to enter access. So with the easy lobby, um, the receptionist can uh, program a card for a visitor and that card information is directly sent to the VAX database, and that will allow that card to go through specific doors that are intended for visitors to go through. All right, what I'd like to do now is to uh, go ahead and show you uh, our software. So again, this is a browser-based software. So you see that I'm opening a browser page here and I'm typing the IP address. Uh, specifically, it's HTTPS. So HTTPS is a SSL secure uh, link to this uh, site here. And VAX works on a specific port 11001. So Typically, in you know, when you type a web page, you're just typing in you know the ad IP address, and it defaults to port 80. Uh, VAX specifically communicates to port 11001, so you do have to type in that port. Um, you are given the option to uh, choose another port number when you first install the software. With a login, you can see here again. This is was shown in the presentation. Um, you know all your Typical, you know, your typical menus for day-to-day -day use, for, such as users. And this is setting up card users, um, access privilege groups to give you access to certain doors. Um, you have an array of reporting here, including door activities, user activities, um, muster reports for anti-passback, uh, inputs, outputs. Um, you can even do time tracking to see when a person went through a specific reader to a certain area. 
and the scheduling here is where you set the doors to specific schedules called door time zones um, and user time zones. And in the case of elevators, then you would have uh, floor time zones. Uh, for inputs and outputs, you would set up schedules through the input time zones. In the system page here, this is where you set up your login credentials um, and your what's called partitions and sites and areas. So partitions, if I click on here, is a way for me to basically create a logical um, grouping of certain elements like panels and doors. For example, like if I have separate buildings, I can create uh, a partition for each building. Here's an example where I have like three different buildings and I've called it building one, building two, building three. So with these partitions, what you're able to do is when you create an administrator through the administrators button here, I can create a person, a user login, a person who's logging into the system to monitor the system or configure you know, the system for access. When you create it here, you can create as user name, last name, uh, you, know, you put in your user information and you can tie them to a specific partition meaning a specific building and you can give them specific permissions um, of you know inside the menu so you can give them all or just specific menu items for each um, partition so again if you have operators um, or security directors that are only able to, are only allowed to view and monitor their own building um, you can again easily set up these login credentials that tie into the different partitions or buildings and again right now i'm logged as an admin and i can see all my menus but again through that administrator uh, login setup that we had we can selectively choose which menus an operator is allowed to see when they log in. The hardware component here, again, I'd like to show how easy it is to set up uh, hardware. So when you first install a panel, if we go back here, remember that with our panel system, the way we program the panel is through these keypad control, where we type in the IP, or program the IP address of the panel and the IP address of the server itself. Once we've entered that information, then on our software, we'll actually see an indication at the top here of a new panel that is detected by the system. Now, I've already programmed all my panels, so I'm not getting a you know new panel notification. But if I did, basically, I would click on that panel notification and that would be the same as going down here to my panels and clicking add. So this is the way for me to add the panel into the system. Again, if I click on an icon indicating a new panel, some of the things here will auto be automatically selected. For example, like what kind of panel it is. If it's a one door, a two door, or a multi-door kit. and then the t connection mode itself in terms of the IP address, again, if it's already been pre-programmed through the panel, you'll automatically see the IP address information changed in here. Now, if you don't have a panel that's already been programmed, you can still use this menu to manually program a panel and set all the programming up beforehand. And then once you have the panel um, ready to connect to the system, then you just plug it into the network and then it'll have all already been pre-programmed into the software itself. Once you have a panel, then what you can do is on the panel itself, you can configure the different elements of the panel. Uh, namely, the most important thing is the IO. So these IOs, 
correspond directly to these physical inputs on the controllers. So the inputs such as request to exit, your door contacts, uh, your door opener, the outputs such as door strikes and door openers, again, they correspond physically to these inputs and outputs on your controller panels. What makes our system unique is you're not tied physically to a direct um, input or output for a certain function, meaning that all these inputs and outputs here uh, can be programmed to work as a certain function. So as a default, let's say input one is for request to exit. So normally you would have to wire your request to exit uh, into input one. But if you don't want to, you can change that input function and you can choose what you want for that function. You know, if you don't want a request to exit, it could be, let's say, a, a motion sensor or an emergency alarm. That means an alarm contact, you're receiving an input from an alarm system. You can tie that in. So the important thing is you don't have to um, be tied physically, you know, an input to a certain function. You can program that input specifically for whatever functions that you want that's available in the system. Same with the output. So if you don't want a door strike to be connected to that output, you can also connect, you know, something else, for example, like an alarm interface, uh, a door opener for automatic doors. So very easy to configure and program the inputs and outputs of a panel through this menu. Card formats, as I mentioned in my presentation, so VAC supports uh, various uh, PROX card formats, and these are all the different card formats that we support, ranging from 26-bit to 75 bits. What that allows us to do is you don't have, you know, you can work with our readers that we um, provide, or if you have your own readers, let's say you're doing a retrofit of a system where there's already existing card readers and you don't want to have to use new readers. Well, you can use your existing readers and as long as the readers comply to one of these common card formats, then we'll be able to communicate to VAX. Now, one thing that we've done with a lot of customers is even if a reader and card is not supported by VAX, uh, potentially we're able to customize the, pro the software to program it to accept a card read from a different type of card reader and format. So that's something that uh, upon request um, we're able to do through our engineering. Through the, the, through the panel menu here, you can access doors. And I have a door programmed here. So when I edit the door here, you can see the elements coming from a door. Uh, namely, you have the options on a door. So for example, like uh, the, the, the door reader itself, how long you want to unlock. Uh, you can set specific time parameters on here. Um, you can disable certain functions on the door. So let's say if you don't want a forced open or held open condition to be detected, you just want it to be ignored, um, you can you know, disable it from this menu. Then you can see your readers here. Again, you have the readers physically tied or connected to the door here. And when you enable the reader, um, you can do things like if it's a, if it's a keypad reader, you can enable it and then you can say what is the keypad interval, meaning how long uh, in between your card read and your you're actually entering the keypad code will that reader accept. So typically, you know, if you're required to swipe a card and type in a pin code, uh, you're given a certain time to do that. Um, with this keypad interval, you can adjust that time in between the card read and how long you have to enter that key code. We also have something called triple swipe that I mentioned before. And if you enable triple swipe on this reader, then you'll allow that to take um, a swipe of a card three times to activate a certain action that we can run through our action plan. 
We also have camera association. Remember that we integrate with video systems and through our integrations, um, we can choose a camera system and we can, um, from that camera system, we can see the list of cameras and we can choose which camera that we want to associate to this door. Now the camera system that's available in this menu um, is actually initially programmed through this camera systems menu here. So when you first start off and you want to add a camera system, meaning tie it to a specific camera system, uh, you go into this menu here and first of all you add uh, a camera and you can choose what type of camera system that you're talking to. So be it Valeris, Viconet, or another platform, you can choose that. And then here you would type in the address of the actual uh, server, the video VMS server, and the username and password on that server itself. Again, this video system is tied into a specific partition. So remember how we set up different partitions, uh, for example, like, building one, building two, building three. So we can have a different camera system that's associated for each building. A real life case of this is, you know, we have some customers who have multiple buildings and they want to maintain all the buildings through one contro access control system. Um, the buildings have their own camera systems. They were, you know, constructed at different times and they might have different camera systems in there. So with this menu, you're able to choose what camera system that you have in that building and tie the cameras to the doors in that building. So once we've added our camera systems here, uh, I've had, you know, I have a, my VMS, my uh, Valeris um, already set up here. Um, I can see the cameras that are available from that VMS and I can check off which cameras that I actually want to use in VAX. So I'm presented with all the cameras that's coming from that VMS, but I don't necessarily have to choose all the cameras. I only have to choose, you know, whichever cameras that are relevant to the access control. And typically you would be choosing cameras that are looking at the doors that you're going through. So once you've checked off the cameras that you want, um, a couple of ways to access those cameras. Uh, one way is through the camera viewer menu here. So in the camera viewer menu, again, you're able to choose your camera system and then click on the camera that you want to view. And if you click on the view live video, then you'll see the video from that camera. If you want to play back video, you can do, uh, you know, play back from 30 seconds ago and that'll access the playback video. Keep in mind, this video is recorded on the VMS NVR itself. So the video is not being stored uh, on VAX. VAX is simply directing the streaming of the camera video from the NVR to VAX and accessing that video. So that's one way of selecting a camera. Um, the more prevalent way of having a camera work in your access control is, again, to associate that camera to a door. And you'll notice here that right now I've programmed uh, the camera and I can program a camera to pop up on a certain door um, event, such as a card read. So for example, here, I'm going to go ahead and turn off all my notifications and Let's say I swipe my card, and again, all my card event notifications, anything that happens in the system, you'll see in this notification menu here. And if I wanted to um, you know, view a camera directly, then I can tell, you know, program to say, okay, every time I have a uh, event from this door, I can show live camera. What this will do is take you to the notification settings menu where you can create different rules to activate different things. For example, in this case, it's a live camera pop-up. So I can activate this or set this so that when I have a reader access granted condition, um, 
I can pop up a video. Now in this state right now, it says any panel, door, or reader. So any panel or door or reader, um, any reader that gives you reader access granted will pop up that video. If I don't want any reader, um, I can even choose selectively which doors um, and which readers uh, I want to have the condition met in order for that camera to pop up. If you don't select a specific condition, then it'll default to all doors and all readers. So let me go in here right now. It looks like my camera is not tied to that door. So I'm going to go into the doors again. And I'm going to go to my Vax demo door menu. And looks like I unchecked that door association. Uh, so let me check that again. And now that I've checked it, now you have my camera association, specifically this airport curbside, to that door. And now that video pops up when the access granted event occurs. Now, this notification gives you every event that's occurring in VAX, um, including, you know, like when the door is unlocking and locking. And if there's certain messages that you don't want to see, um, you can just go on the cog wheel here. And let's say if you don't want to see that notification, then you can just choose to hide that notification. Once you've done that, then every time that notification appear, uh, occurs, it won't appear here in the notification. You've effectively filtered that notification out. As I mentioned here in VAX, besides the main menu, uh, another useful menu is your monitoring menu. And with monitoring, when I click on the monitoring menu, um, I'm taken to this menu here when I can, where I can choose, uh, for example, what events I want to see, and I can program like in what format those um, card reads occur. So I can you know, choose different tile formats. I can choose how many notifications. When that event occurs, then what you'll see is not only you'll see that event occur on the left side, but you'll see a um, real time um, showing of that badge on the right side here. So you'll see the badge photo that's corresponding to that badge. And then you'll see the video that's coming from the camera, again, that's associated to that door. Now, this is a live shot or you know, a live uh, you know, recording of the camera. But if I click on, let's say, a past event, so if I go down here and click on another event, um, then as long as there's a camera that is associated to that door, then you'll see the recording from that time period. So this is a very easy way for you to monitor your system and make sure that the person who's badging is actually the person who's, um, you know, who who that card belongs to. Now, if you're not actively monitoring the system, um, you can still take advantage of the camera video integration in a couple of ways. Uh, one way is through the reports. So for example, through my reporting mechanism here, I can go to door activity as an example. I can choose uh, one or multiple doors. And let's say I want to see uh, what events occurred um, on specific doors from a certain time to a certain time. Uh, I can run that report and I can see um, all the card credentials uh, badging that occurred at that door. And if I want to see a record of that, I have the record here in text, but let's say I want to see the video from that, then I can just click on the camera icon, in which case it'll show you the playback video from that um, event. Again, remember that this video is being recorded on the, the, the VMS NVR. It's not being stored from the access control.
So you can see, you know, it's very useful to, again, see video um, in a variety of ways. Another way is through maps. So as I mentioned, you can import maps into the system. And once you have the maps, you can do things like um, assign a map and enter the different door icons, uh, access control icons like doors or cameras. So you can just drag whatever icon you want from your access control element here. And then once it's populated, you can click on that icon. So right here, I'm clicking on my door. And when I click on my door, I see the state of my door and I see the live video that's corresponding to that door. I can do things in here like change the state of that door. For example, if I want to lock down that door, I can do an override to lock down. And now the door is in lockdown mode. If I want to set back the schedule, then I can click on resume. And now it's card only again. I can pulse the door. So let's say if somebody forgets their card and they come up to door and they call me, um, I can click on this icon to see that person there and then pulse open that door. So you can see how useful the map is um, to view different elements. And you know, I can populate cameras on the map itself and I can view both live and playback video uh, of my cameras here. So the last thing I want to cover, and there's many elements um, in VAX, but I want to mention, you know, as I uh, presented, uh, one of the biggest things in VAX is the action plans. So an action plan, again, is a way for you to customize and write a program to do certain things. On the left here, you can see all the different things I can do. For example, I can uh, override a door. I can choose a door and I can override that door to a certain condition, let's say lockdown or, or unlock. Um, I can trigger an output. Um, I can go to the network and I can send an email. Um, I can use what's called a notify command and make a custom uh, pop-up menu that will show a menu and I can type in my message here and I can choose a camera to notify. So you, there's a lot of different things you can do here. And not only can you use the commands that you have here, but through something called an HTTP request, you're able to invoke um, API commands. So this is the actual programming of the software, um, the back end of the software. Uh, so to speak, and you can actually run a API command directly to VAX um, for any commands that you don't have this, um, seen here readily. Uh, again, you can get into very heavy programming with this. Uh, not only can you use this to access the VAX programming, but you can also use this to access the API of a third party software. So we can use this action plan to invoke an action or run something off of a third party software. So just as an example, um, I've created a program here uh, already where if I triple swipe on a reader, meaning I swipe the reader three times, um, then, the, then I've locked down the door. So now you can see it says my current door is in lockdown mode, okay. Um, I can triple swipe that again, and I've programmed it so that if I swipe it three times again, it takes it out of the lockdown mode and it goes back to normal. Um, the triggers here, again, I can program my triggers, and what I did was I programmed the triple swipe. Uh, again, if I click on here, um, I can choose a certain physical event. Um, in this case, it's a reader event, and a triple swipe, meaning swipe three times at a reader, and I can choose a specific action plan that I'm running. I also programmed another action here where I have a panic button uh, action. So this is a physical input 
that I've programmed. And when I run this input or activate this input, then I can evoke a specific action plan. In this case, I created a panic button action plan. What this plan does is when I press on it, then it'll pop up the notify menu that I mentioned a little bit ago in the action plan. So I can create this menu with customized text here. In this case, I'm saying panic button one on main door activated. On that menu, I can also program additional buttons. And you see here, this button on the left, I've met, named it lockdown all doors. So when I click on this button, I, can, I will be running another action plan that's programmed for this button. Um, so if I click on the lockdown button, now the doors that I programmed in the action. Um, so just to wrap it up, a um, couple of uh, future roadmap items. So currently we're um, in development uh, of a system for alarm acknowledgement. So this will allow a security personnel to actively uh, manage alarms, uh, for example, door alarms or different inputs and you'll be able to uh, click on an alarm and, and acknowledge that you've seen that alarm and then assign notes, you know, put notes onto the alarm. All of this will be stored in the VAX database for you to reference to later. Uh, we're also uh, in design of a OSDP, uh, support for OSDP. So an OSDP is a secure protocol that um, controls the communication between the reader and the controller. So we talked about how you read a card to a reader and with a smart card, you have a secure link between the card and the reader. But the reader, when it's connected to the control panel, um, even though it's connected wirelessly or, or wired, um, that link is not secure right now. So somebody can actually go in and sniff the information going through. Through OSDP, uh, this is a protocol to secure that link. And uh, we're working on that now. We should have that um, available in a couple of months. Um, we also have a couple of other things we're working on, including a new GUI and also um, make a solution for a cloud hosting solution. So the server doesn't necessarily have to be on your site, but a, uh, op a service provider can actually have a server that they can provide um, a virtual server access to multiple sites, multiple customers. Finally, we're also working on integrating um, to third-party controllers. So right now we work specifically with our VAX controllers, but many of our customers have asked uh, us to be able to use the VAX software with their own controllers. So a lot of customers have legacy controllers, um, from other vendors like Mercury, and they want to tie that into VAX. So we're working on that integration now. All right, thank you very much. And um, I'll go ahead and take any questions that you have here. Let's see. Any plans to support RTSP streams of cameras inside VAX? That's a good, that's a good question. Um, uh, currently, we don't have that plan, um, typically because the integration, you know, most of the time when you have a camera system, you're working with a specific VMS, you're not, you know, working with a camera itself. Uh, but we have been asked by that, uh, by, you know, specific customers about that, and uh, that's something that um, uh, we are looking into. But currently, yeah, we don't have plans for that right now. Let me see if we have other questions here. So when adding an administrator, can that administrator be assigned to multiple partitions or only one? That's a very good question. Yes, an administrator um, can be assigned to as many partitions as you want. So you can be assigned to one partition or multiple partitions. And within each partition, you can have that administrator only uh, access certain menus that you want them to. Um, another question is, does the Connect app have to be open and the card credentials showing on the smartphone screen in order for it to work? All right, so this is, um, we've had a lot of customers ask this. 
And the answer is yes. The reason why we do this is, um, let's say you know you don't have the app open and you have your phone in your pocket. Um, if you're able to uh, run the credential in the background, then let's say you accidentally come to that door, um, you can inadvertently open that door, in which case somebody behind you can you know just access that door and you know, open that door and come in. So for security reasons, um, the way it's designed is that the app has to be open. Now, it's very easy for you to set a shortcut on your phone um, to make it readily available for you to just click open that app. And as soon as the app is open, then the card credential will be presented. Uh, let me see if there's another. Is there a dist distance restriction to the second door from the controller? Um, okay, so uh, th this will be the last uh, question I take, uh, unfortunately, just due to the time. Um, if you have any questions, other questions, uh, feel free to send it to our uh, email here. Um, in terms of distance, yes. So typically, uh, the distance is just restricted based on the, the wiring. Um, so, the wiring to a reader typically you can have up to like 500 feet um, from the from the reader to the controller itself. Um, so that's typically the the limit of the the distance. <laughs> 